who else might want to join us? Okay, well, I think I'm gonna get started. I did hit um, record. We are recording the open office hour tonight, just so everyone um, who's interested in uh, the VORA Community Grant Program and the Outdoor Equity Track in particular can benefit from our conversation this evening. Um, I wanna welcome you all and thank you for taking the time to be here with us. Um, we're really excited to be offering these open office hours uh, with this round of the grant program uh, and to be able to support applicants as um, you fill out the full application. Um, so each of our open office hours, we have, I think, four or five of them scheduled, are intended uh, for the first half hour to focus on a different topic. Um, and then the second half an hour is open for any questions um, anyone might have. And for our open office hour tonight, we're focusing on outdoor equity for the or the outdoor equity track for the first half an hour um, before we open it up to questions for anyone. Um, so please stay for as long as you'd like. We're going to try and get through as many questions as we can in the time that we have. We'll be uh, going until around 8 p.m. Um, and if we don't get to a question, a burning question you have, uh, I do encourage you to reach out to us um, at our recreation uh, grants email, uh, which uh, we can put in the chat for you uh, just in case we don't get to your question. Um, but right now it seems like we're a reasonably sized group. Um, so what I'd like to do is just start with a quick round of introductions for the program staff on the call. And for folks uh, calling in uh, to chat with us, I, I encourage you at this time to go ahead and put your name and affiliation in the chat. And when we um, when you when we get to your question, I'll, I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself before you ask. But um, I'll start, I'm Jackie Dagger, and I am the program manager for the Vermont Outdoor Recreation Economic Collaborative. Uh, and really excited to be offering uh, this, this round of grants this year. We have up to $6 million that we're, we have available for funding. And I'll pass it over to Lauren. Hi all, my name is Lauren Pyle. I am the Outdoor Recreations Grants Manager for uh, Forest Parks and Recre Recreation. And so I work and support the Vort Community Grant as well as the Recreational Trails Program Grant and um, the Land and Water Conservation Fund Grant. So I support all of the grant programs that we have. Okay. Great, thanks Lauren and Shalini. I remembered to unmute, this is history making right now. I usually forget to do that. Um, hi, everybody. Good evening. I'm Shalini Surya Naraina. I work for our statewide Office of Racial Equity, and I'm the Education and Outreach Specialist. I'll be able to tell you a little bit more about my work uh, in a few minutes. Great. Thanks, Shalini. Um, we may have uh, Becca Washburn joining us here in a little bit. She was having some internet difficulties, but she is the director of the Division of Lands Administration and Recreation, and she also chairs the Vorex Steering Committee. So just if, if she pops in, uh, you'll, you'll know who she is. Um, all right, so I want to provide a very quick overview of the Outdoor Equity Grants track. Um, really excited that we have this track this year. Uh, we are very much piloting this um, funding track for the Vorek Community Grant Program, and we're piloting it in partnership with the Office of Racial Equity, so I'll, I'll let Shalini talk more about that in a minute. Um, and what we're doing in partnership with the Office of Racial Equity and piloting this grant track is we're we're learning about how this this grant track is going to work it going to work and in fact we've already identified some ways that we can improve on in the future so I hope um, you know in applying to this grant track 
you'll recognize that um, this is this is the first time that we're offering this um, opportunity for funding, and I think we're going to learn a lot along the way. Um, the purpose of this funding track is to support projects that will reduce barriers and expand opportunities for people to access Vermont's outdoors. Um, and in particular, this track is meant to fund projects that support BIPOC, LGBTQ plus people, people with low incomes, speakers of languages beyond English, and or people uh, with disabilities. Um, and this is also the first and only track um, of the Vorek Community Grant Program that is open for businesses to apply. We made that, that change for this track, recognizing that outdoor businesses are really interested in supporting outdoor equity and that there's a lot of great potential there. Um, and so businesses are eligible in addition to nonprofit organizations and municipalities. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Shalini to speak because I I would love for you to know more about the Office of Racial Equity um, and how they're supporting um, equity uh, work for municipalities and the state of Vermont. So, Shalini, I'll I'll turn it over to you. Sure, thanks, Jackie. And please, Jackie, jump in if I forget to mention something. Um, we are partnering and collaborating on all of this, and that includes. Um, what we're sharing today. So we'll we'll probably both be tag teaming on some things. So as I said before, my name is Shalini. Um, when I was in grad school, a lot of friends told me that when I introduced myself, I should tell people that my name sounds like Colony to make it easier for people to remember. Shalini, like Colony. Um, the only problem is these days, I don't really like my name so much aligned with the... Um, Oh, does someone have their? That's some feedback. Yeah, I'm wondering, I'm is just, everybody still muted? I'm going to, I think we are now. Go ahead. Okay, thanks. I was just going to say, um, I just don't like that connection to colonization. But uh, that aside, so I'm Shalini. And um, we, our Office of Racial Equity, is really excited about working with Vorek and uh, Forest Parks and Recreation. So um, we've uh, we've always had a connection. Our office is somewhat new. The legislature formed it about um, coming up on four years ago. And uh, we are charged with serving the whole state of Vermont. And um, our first goal was working with um, all the state agencies, our state government. And so we're working uh, throughout every department, every agency. Um, but I will also say that my roots in state government started in the Agency of Natural Resources. So my first job in our Vermont state government was in the Department of Environmental Conservation. And so while I was there, I got to work closely with people in forest parks and recreation and with people in fish and wildlife. So I, um, it's close to my heart. The work that comes out of this area, and I've I've had a deep connection with um, outdoor equity issues for quite some time now. Um, I also want to mention and share that our Office of Racial Equity launched a program called Ideal Vermont almost exactly one year ago today. Um, so that program, Ideal, is actually an acronym. It stands for Inclus Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, Action, Leadership. So Ideal Vermont is a program. It's statewide, and it's not just for anyone to sign up for. It is specifically for town, city, village, municipality leadership. So it's a program for local government um, to help them learn and practice equity. So uh, our state, so we're we're promoting equity on a local level. And so our state office plays a sort of convening role and an assistive role for municipalities who are trying to advance equity through policy and through knowledge sharing. So members of the program are involved, um, will be involved now with this outdoor equity track. So the people who are going through the training with us are going to be involved in helping to provide advice, 
and um, be a sounding board for people to bounce ideas off of or run things by um, prior to finalizing your work. So um, we can we can go into that in more detail as we're as we move through the presentation and the question and answer. But that's sort of a general overview. And I think I'm going to put some links in the chat, both to our Office of Racial Equity and to tell you a little bit more about the Ideal Vermont program. Um, is there anything you want to ask about now before we keep going? And I would say about the office and and if not, then we will open the floor up. So I'll just I'll just give that a moment in case anyone has questions about uh, the Office of Racial Equity or Ideal Vermont for Shalini. All right, I'm not seeing any, so I'm going to move us along. And so we're at 711 right now. We have until 730 uh, to focus on questions related to the outdoor equity grant track. Um, so I do ask if you have a question about the full application that's not related to the outdoor equity grant track. I ask that you hold that until after 730 um, or until we get through the questions we have focused on um, outdoor equity. Um, but I'll turn the floor over to you now. And what I'm going to do is look for raised hands um, or questions in the chat. Lauren's going to help us track questions in the chat. Um, or you could just raise your hand in your screen and let me know that you have a question if you can't find the raise hand function. Um, but I'll pause there and look for raised hands from anyone with a question. I see Annalise. Um, and if you, again, um, as a reminder, please go ahead and before you ask your question, um, unmute and say your name and affiliation, and, and then we'd love to hear your question. Great. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I'm Annalise Carrington. Um, she, her pronouns. I'm um, a lands manager with the Vermont Land Trust. And my question was around a, a concept that we're building out for our application that will involve um, our work on multiple properties across the state. And I wanted to ensure that that would be eligible for um, for this grant tract uh, in that it wouldn't be one specific project in one place, but it would be um, sort of a, a theme across multiple projects um, kind of statewide on lands that we work with. Yeah, thanks for that question, Annalise. Yes, um, that is eligible under this grant track. Um, we are encouraging folks uh, in this funding track in particular to think to think big um, and and uh, it doesn't have to be in alignment with one community. Uh, and I'll just ask if Lauren or uh, Becca, I saw you just jumped on, welcome. Um, I introduced you a little bit earlier. And uh, if you if either of you have anything to add to that. Yeah, I'm happy to share that it came up in one of the earlier office hours and people said, well, how do we define community for these community events? And that's one of the pieces is that it, geography is a part of it, but communities can show up in many different ways. They can be groups of people with shared lived experiences, with shared identities. Um, they could be geographic. And so if you have that consistent community, you're saying, yes, our project is going to help this community and we're going to use all of these spaces as long as it feels cohesive and it's really supportive of that, it would be a fit for the program. Um, but that's one of the questions that's kind of come up before that matches that. There's another question that oh, got submitted. Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I just wanted to raise to everyone's attention another question got submitted in the chat. Yeah, this is a good one. If a project is both construction and outdoor equity, but isn't maybe shovel ready for spring 2024, could a grantee apply for funding that covers the initial planning process for land acquisition and construction and also include a request for funding for the second phase, the actual land acquisition and construction? 
Lauren, I don't know if this question has been coming up in previous ones and you have sort of the way that you would respond to this. I'm happy to give it a swing, um, but I'd love to hear what you've been responding to folks that have this question. Yeah, certainly. So for us, you know, we haven't been hearing a lot of requests about specifically this type of double project related to the outdoor equity fund. So we have to, to figure that piece out. But we have been hearing with projects in general saying, I have some planning and some implementation. And as far as the evaluation components of this grant go, like when we're going through the scoring and looking at the application, all of that, those really are separate pieces. And so what we're encouraging folks to do is they think if you have that first phase that is that planning phase is to separate that into a distinctively different proposal because you're going to have to answer different questions about those different opportunities. And I'll, I'll pull the link in from a minute, but we've actually pulled together the entire preview of the application that is available online. And the, the way the application online works is that it is actually responsive to your questions. So if you say, I'm picking the outdoor equity track, these are the questions that you're going to answer as related to that. I'm going to pick the project development track. These are the questions that are going to be related to that. I'm going to pick the implementation track. And so what we're encouraging folks to do is to really like look through those questions in advance and, and to try to get that assessment of which of these, the questions that are being asked really fit your project. And if they really, if they go together and you can see that connection, you're welcome to apply that, you know, if it is under the outdoor, outdoor equity track, but if you're starting to look through the application and you really see that like the questions in those other tracks are better fits, we're, we're recommending that that project development and the implementation be separated out because they really are different times. Yeah, I, I, um, that's a great answer, Lauren. And I, I just want to make crystal clear: we are asking people if you, if you're not going to be shovel ready in the, uh, the 2024 season, we, we do want to support you in project development. But we would consider that a project development track project. The implementation track projects require you to have your permits ready to go your design completed, and th that you're going to be doing that work. If you get that funding, you're going to be ready to go into construction. Um, so just to make that clear, we if if you are in the development phase, we, we're asking you to apply to project development. And what that does is if you want to come back in a future round and apply for funding to do that construction, you'll already have a much stronger project because you'll have gone through that project development phase. One of the follow-up questions is right in the chat that is directly connected to this is the timeline, right? How much time do you have to do these projects? And so for us, the project implementation dates would be beginning, um, it would be, at, sorry, they begin in next summer, next summer and then they're gonna go through uh, December 31st, 2025. Um, so that will be the end date is December uh, 31st, 2025. But we're hoping to have everything ready uh, by June 1st, 2024 for you to get started. So essentially what you're saying, Lauren, is that folks have two construction seasons. If implementation grants are truly ready to rock and roll, they have their permits, all those kinds of things. And that's for all grants, right? Like that is for the project development, is for the outdoor equity track, is for all of them. Yeah. Great. I just want to remind everyone, we are talking this first half an hour about outdoor equity grants. We're trying to focus this time until 730, primarily on outdoor equity. And uh, Janet, I see you have your hand raised, so please go ahead. Thank you so much. <clears throat> so uh, Janet Callison, I'm the grants manager with the Lake Champlain Community Sailing Center. Very happy to be with you all tonight. Um, and my, the the question I have is about equipment. So I'm looking at the, um, the list of eligible expenses by grant track. Um, and I see supplies and tools, but one of the, um, one of the things that we really need to be able to um, expand our, um, adaptive sailing program is a new boat and I'm just curious about whether there are limitations to equipment costs or equipment costs um, kind of within a, a program budget. Yeah, 
Lauren, is this a question that you've come across? I think my my initial reaction from our planning is that there there is no minimum or maximum for outdoor equity grants, and we don't um, put any limits on uh, the equipment. There is there are administrative costs which we do. Um, you can include, uh, and and those can't be above 10% of the total requested amount, um, but there is no uh, direct cap on uh, cost for equipment. Great. I think in general, <clears throat> what Janet's saying general. too is that maybe we weren't really explicit that when we were saying like supplies and tools and things also included like bikes, boats, trailers, you know, things like that, that are like permanent infrastructure to help um, increase access to outdoor recreation. Great, thanks so much, I appreciate it. Shalini, do you wanna jump in? Yeah, I just wanted to say, Janet, one thing you might wanna think about if you do wanna write a proposal for something like a boat, um, is to be able to identify how there's a need to buy the whole boat, that it's not like you can take a regular boat and just add some modifications to it to make it accessible. Do you know what I mean? To build the rationale for why you need to make such a big purchase and that there isn't another more economical way to achieve what the desired result. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Great advice. Right, I'm seeing some notes being dropped in the chat, but I'm also looking for raised hands. Anyone else with questions related to the outdoor equity grant track? Um, and I'm not seeing raised hands. I'm going to go to the chat and this question is from uh, Patricia Reed and it says, hi there. Um, uh, let's see, where's the, the question? Um, so questions have been really helpful. Um, the, the question that Patricia is wondering about is the appropriate scope for uh, the application. Um, and Patricia, I don't know if you're, you can or you're comfortable coming off mute. Um, I think, you know, we're intentionally with the outdoor equity grants the scope, um, and I, I apologize, there's some background noise if if we could mute. Thank you. Um, the appropriate scope, the outdoor equity grant tracks are really intended to focus on, um, you know, building accessibility, um, focused on inclusion and equity. Uh, and I am curious what uh, scope you are uh, are thinking about, uh, and that might help us more uh, adequately answer that question for you. Um, so again, if you can't come off mute, maybe just drop a little more information in the chat and we can read it out loud for everyone. Um, but I'll, I'll see if you can come off mute right now. And yeah, share a little of course, more. no problem. I can, Thanks, I can definitely come off mute. I hope you can hear me. Um, yeah. Can you hear me? Okay, great. I can't see any of you, so I, <laughs> I'm like talking to the screen. Um, but yeah, no, no specific question. Just glad to hear uh, that you folks are are interested in, in you know bigger bigger scopes for applications at the Lake Champlain Maritime Museum. Where we're trying to find you know new and inclusive ways to to do more outdoor recreation, get more folks out onto the lake. Um, so we have some ideas around, like for example, partnering with Vermont Adaptive um, to adapt our our longboats program um, so that folks with disabilities can can easily access those those rowing gigs. Um, or working with, for example, the Open Door Clinic here in Middlebury to uh, get migrant farm workers uh, who primarily speak Spanish out into out into the boats and out into our programs. Um, so I guess I kind of came to this wondering, would it be better to focus on one partnership or several partnerships um, for this for this first round? Yes, and I um, I, I want to let anyone, any of the other program staff, jump in on that question. I thank you for sharing a little more with us about what you're thinking about. Um, I think, you know, if you if you are going for a project that you're you're looking to partner with multiple 
partners and bring them together. I think that just the thing you would want to think about is what's the through line. Um, you know, like what what is it about the partnerships that you're building that connects those partners and why are you the con the best convener for that work? Um, and I'll turn it over if Shalini, Laura, and Becca, any of you have others other things to add. I'll I think just, your advice is really great. Oh, go ahead, Shalini. No, no, go for it, Becca. I was just going to jump in and say um, that we encourage that broad partnership is really exciting to see these really fun, innovative projects. Um, but they are more complex. You know, they take more time to administer. They take more time to help support. So um, if you're looking for a good quick win, you know, a simple, straightforward scope of work um, and a straightforward project is is probably the right idea. Um, but if you have a strong team, one that's worked together in the past, um, that could be a really great thing. What we want to do is we want to show the greatest possible impact with this funding. Sean Lini, did you want to add? Yeah, I was just going to add to be really strategic about how and when, in what stage of the project you want to introduce partners. So you might not need to involve all of them in the preliminary stages, but if your proposal is full and complete for the whole project, then obviously you're going to want to include who the different partners are at the different stages. And that's also where um, understanding in what ways they're going to be contributing. So one of the things about equity and partnerships is about authenticity in the relationship, that it's tends not to be just one way, that there's reciprocity in the way the partnership, how the people are engaging together, and that there's um, um, opportunity for involvement in decision making and so on. So you might want to be able to demonstrate in terms of um, involving partners, you might want to demonstrate how are they involved in the project and how much voice they have in the project and um, all the different groups that they're representing and how that also supports the goals of the project. Great. Um, Drew, I see you, you've been patient with your hand raise, so please go ahead. Yeah, thanks, sorry, I'm in the airport if there's a little bit of background noise here. Um, I'm kind of looking at two different applications. One, I think it's pretty straightforward uh, with the Society of Outdoor Rec Professionals. Uh, we put on the National Outdoor Rec Conference each year, and then we have uh, an inclusive uh, trail assessment workshop that we've done uh, internationally at the International Trail Symposium and in Colorado. So we're gonna propose that. I think it's pretty clearly within that um, workshops space. So just a heads up that we're submitting that one. Um, excited for that. Uh, and then uh, CRO Planning and Design is partnering with Vermont Adaptive, and we're looking at doing an economic impact analysis of Vermont Adaptive's programs, events, and operations. It's one of those things where snowmobiling and many of those other activities have that information to advocate for, um, and Vermont Adaptive does, does not kind of have that information to kind of put next to some of those other recreation activities. I didn't see it clearly listed in some of the allowed uh, activities. So I want to just see where y'all might put that. Um, I think it would really help bring resources to Vermont Adaptive um, and fundraising and support all of their programming, um, which reaches lots of Vermonters. And we're curious what you're thinking maybe about that track and if it fits with this. Yeah, and Drew, I, I have the benefit of having talked with Vermont Adaptive a little bit about that project already as well. And um, we we had talked about it under the outdoor equity track. Um, it, it does seem like it's program related uh, and capacity related. And those are those are both things that are um, the outdoor equity track is intended to support. Um, and and I think it would be, I, I think it sounds like a really exciting and interesting project. We're thinking about economic impact um, and how we 
measure that uh, for outdoor recreation around the state. So um, I think that's a really uh, interesting idea. And and yeah, I, th I think the outdoor equity track is um, sounds like a good fit for that application. Yeah, we like the uh, component there. We um, just weren't sure where it, where it fit in. Just so excited because it'll be new data that's not available anywhere in the country right now. So we're really excited to, to think about that. Thanks. So interesting too, Drew, um, I don't know if you're aware, but there was a bill introduced last year in the Vermont legislature related to increasing accessibility with the amount of funding coming into the state in support of outdoor recreation. Uh, so having some data could be a really interesting thing for us to add to the conversation this upcoming session or the following, given the timeline for funding. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I do want to recognize that we're now at 731. I want to encourage any additional outdoor equity grant track questions. We're going to keep them flowing, but um, if you do have a question uh, that's not related to the outdoor equity grant track specifically, um, at this time, please go ahead and, and jump in and, and we'll get through as many questions as we can before eight. And, um, or well, we'll wrap up a little bit, but around eight. Um, Andy, I see you have your hand raised. Go ahead. Great, thank you. Um, so we are. I'm I'm up in St. Albans, um, the Franklin County Mountain Biking Club, which was just re renamed the Trails Alliance, and um, we're looking at a project that would basically build eight miles of trail, four down, four up, um, crosses three towns, but primarily in Swanton. And the reason that's I was thinking equity related is that is the sort of the ancestral homeland of the Abenaki. And um, we're looking to basically partner with them on this trail in the naming of it, maybe even make some heritage type um, aspects to the trail. Um, and also we've been wanting to do work with the youth. Um, about 75% of the population there, the, the kids are, are Abenaki descendants. So, um, you know, I think that it's a, probably a design project that really we're looking for, but I will also see the equity uh, aspect of it. So I, I go back and forth between which category I should be applying in. Probably design, but I think that it can have an equity component to it. But any thoughts on that or? Well, that sounds like a really exciting project, Andy. And what I would say is outdoor equity is tied in throughout the grant program. It just because your project has outdoor yeah. equity components doesn't preclude you from applying to like the design, the project design um, track. Right. Um, and in fact, you know, where you're at, it sounds like that project might better align with project development, kind of similar okay. to what Lauren was saying earlier, you know, yeah. encourage, I encourage you and um, to look at those questions and, and kind of make that determination from there. But I think including those aspects about the connection to the Abenaki and what you're planning to do um, would really strengthen your proposal. Okay, and bigger picture, it's tied into the new rail trail. And um, so I, th I think it has a pretty big impact on recreation, so. Great. Thank you. Exciting. I wanna add call to attention. Uh, we have a, ch a chat question um, from Lori from a little bit back about wondering about project scope and what is might be considered too small to be competitive. Uh, they serve new Americans, uh, asylum seeking re and refugee families and BIPOC families with children ages zero to five. One of the programs specifically serves families with children on the autism spectrum for whom escapement running away is a great risk. Therefore, the families are reluctant to engage in activities like skiing, bicycling, even sledding. And many of the families don't even have access to appropriate outdoor gear, coats, boots, snowshoes, et cetera. Does work like that seem appropriate? I gave it a big thumbs up and said that's exactly what we're looking for. <laughs> I think that's a perfect example of, you know, very um, simple but impactful ways that this funding could make a difference for families. Would love Definitely. to see that application. Yeah, I gave it a big heart because <laughs> I thought also, uh, just like we were saying, don't worry about dreaming big. It's okay to also apply for something that's not on a massive yeah. scale but that can make a massive impact on the lives of those families. So, so the goal is to find projects that are going to reach people and lift people up 
and include uh, broaden the inclusion. So it sounds like you're right aligned with those kinds of goals. Definitely. Great. And I, I would like to add in just like hopping in as an answer there of like thinking about small but growing programs is that this grant can cover your time. I want to call that to attention because I think that that's something that's really important and valuable and it can cover your time in two ways. We actually have a flat like 10% administrative fee that you can cover that include to help cover time for reporting for QuickBooks for keeping the lights on all the things that are hard to quantify that need to operate your programs like that is one chunk of time and it does have that limit on it. If you're spending time managing programming like what you're trying to do with the grant there is no cap on that uh and so thinking about like what you just shared that story you know that that type of uh experience like what is the time that you're going to spend man managing that lending space like helping you to recruit families supporting them in that way like you can include that in your grant and especially if you're a small but growing group that's something to consider is like really including the value of your time in this opportunity to make it possible and really sustainable for you as you're embarking on your project over the next two years. Okay. Great point, Lauren. All right, I see, Craig, you've had your hand raised for a little while. Thanks for your patience. Uh, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, um, I'm uh, tangentially involved in a couple applications which are on the perhaps think big or broad community end of the spectrum. But I've already heard some other folks ask questions about things that are similar or related or complementary. And um, so rather than compete, <laughs> I didn't know if there's a stage in the review where you get like different people saying, I got a great idea and someone else has a great idea and they're real similar. And you're like, maybe you guys should talk to each other. I don't know if there's a stage in the review process that does that. Yeah, Craig, that's certainly something we've done in the past. Um, and we've we've changed up our review process a little bit this year, but I, I think, you know, we we do our intention is to um to encourage partnerships. And if we if we do see similar applications, you may hear from us saying, like, hey, you you both have this great idea. Is there a way for you to partner? Um, you know, we want to be thoughtful about those partnerships um, because ultimately, uh, you know, the 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 management of the grant, I think, is where we've noticed there there can be difficulty in in those kinds of partnerships. So, you know, it is something we call out and want to explore, um, but we also want people to be thoughtful about, you know, who's the right um, who's the right leader of this this project and and how are they communicating with us um, in the Department of Forest Parks and Recreation. So uh, Lauren or Becca, anything to add there? I think her advice is really good, Jackie. Um, the other thing we do too is, you know, whether or not you're twigging to, you know, likely partners through the course of this conversation, we're similarly um you, serving as a networker and connector if we're hearing of projects like oh gosh this this sounds very similar we should really connect the two of them before they submit their application so they have an opportunity to to think and consider partnership so we're looking for those opportunities as well we also wouldn't um respond differently to a project that decides to you know stay separate too because there can be very good reasons as jackie alluded to um, for maintaining the distinction between different projects different deliverables diff even different financial management systems uh, there are a lot of devils in the details that we want to make sure that we don't create a, an issue with and, and create a hardship um, we want these projects to be really successful That, that all makes perfect sense. Thank you. And and the um, another uh, uh, angle that I would think of is not so much people who want to um, administer their grant together, but maybe if someone else is doing a very similar thing, we could just talk to each other. And like, what what you know, what maybe if someone else is doing it, we don't have to duplicate it. And that you know, be, be less work for you guys. That makes sense. Yeah. Definitely. Part of it. Well, I, and I will say part of the, the challenge, like we will do that as much as we can, but we, these are the conversations that we're having where we're learning about the projects uh, as well as emails and other pieces. So what's something that's different this year than in some of the previous rounds of, of the Vort Community Grants 
is that we don't have a letter of uh, interest phase. And so we're not cultivating this whole list of like, we know what the projects are and what it's going to be. Uh, you know, applications are due December 15th. Uh, you're one of those folks like I used to write grants a lot in my in my in my previous role uh, where you're like sometimes it's 1159 the day it's due right like sometimes that's when it is and that's when we're going to find out what it is and so I just want to acknowledge and uh, just recognize that like sometimes our matchmaking ability we can do it to the best of our ability but sometimes it's just limited based on what we know yeah great um, I'm looking in the chat to see if we have any other questions there. I'm also looking for any other hands raised with additional questions. And I see Jean, go ahead. Hi, thank you so much for having this. It's been really informative. Um, I would like to, um, since all of you uh, people are so impactful in um, bringing up these topics of outdoor equity, I just wanted to bring up um, a point about um, fairness throughout the outdoor access that hasn't been touched on in like the BIPOC, LGBTQ, and the people in poverty is um, people in larger bodies. And um, people in larger bodies are constantly being told that the outdoor space is not for them. Um, going from buying the clothing or access or the hikes that are straight up and straight down or the mountain bike rides that you know can't be done because they're in larger bodies. And I just wanted, while I have all these influencers here to consider how we can make outdoor access more fair for those people that are in big bodies. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jean, for contributing that. All right. Still looking for other hands being raised, other questions that we can help you with. We have about 17 minutes left. No pressure. If you don't have any other questions, we'll we'll end a little early, but um, just want to make sure that we don't miss any burning uh, burning needs that people have as you're de developing your projects and and working on that full application. I can. Oh no, Pam's gonna question. I'll let her go. Great. Go ahead, Pam. Um. My work was basically an evaluation, so I have an evaluation question. And I see that the, you have the pillars. And when I read through the pillars, they look like goals to me. Um, is it useful to think about those as the goals we would like to measure our, our, our evaluation with? And all of them or some of them <laughs> or choose one. Um, I'm, you know, I have to really look through them to see how I think about it myself, but I'm curious about how you're seeing that. Is that going to be part of how you're measuring? Okay. Yes, Pam, the, the pillars are uh, important. They're, they're how we think about the outdoor recreation economy work that we're doing in the state of Vermont um, and how VORIC thinks about, you know, the work that we do. Um, so as we're granting out this funding, we want part of what we're doing is making sure that we're we're hitting those different areas mm -hmm. of the outdoor recreation economy. So so they are important. We don't we don't ask that everyone meet all of those pillars. Mm -hmm. um, right. You know, you could focus on one or two, and and that wouldn't, um, you know, that wouldn't make your application, uh, or that that would still be a strong application. Um, it's just something that we're keeping in the back of our minds, and and how mm -hmm. we're evaluating some of the, uh, or how we're evaluating to some extent the applications. Mm -hmm. Anything right. else to add, Lauren or Becca? I yeah, what you learned. Yeah, well, I would say the other piece of evaluation that I want to mention is that the application does ask for measures of success. That is part of what we ask about is like, how are you going to define success? But it is how you are going to define success is something we want to know because measures of success could be head counts on a trail, right? It could be these really quantitative measures. But especially since tonight's theme is focused on the outdoor equity track, it could also be the quality and depth of experience, 
right? Like how can you do those other assessments to, to really say that this was a success to our project was really great. And so as you're thinking about how you can put together your project and measures of success, just know that it can be both qualitative or quantitative as it relates to what matters to you and your program. Great. Becca, did you want to add anything else? I think the only thing, um, just to build on what both you, Jackie, and Lauren have said about this particular question about the pillars, there is a section of the application, the general application, before it splits into the different tracks where it does ask you to consider which of the pillars you think your project would advance. And I think I would just encourage being very concise and direct like don't try to hit all of them if it feels like it's diluting the impact of of the project and really be very simple and say this is what we think we're going to do and this is how it advances what this track represents as a goal of the outdoor rec economy in vermont great advice um, I want to read aloud a, a question I'm seeing in the chat for everyone. Uh, and the question is, would you encourage partnership between a nonprofit and a for-profit business? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Um, that is a great partnership to make. Uh, part of what we are interested in doing with this funding is creating those connections connecting um, outdoor recreation infrastructure to downtowns, to businesses. Um, that's part of what we're trying to do with outdoor recreation economy. So absolutely, yes. Um, yeah, and Drew then, has a good one too. Drew has a good, Drew, do you wanna, do you wanna ask your question? Just around the letters of support. I see uh, three is the maximum, but maybe some of our projects may have a lot of partners involved. Um, and just what's the best way to kind of show that they're all on board? Maybe like one letter of support where they all sign on, or is there an approach that you'd like to see for that? We changed up the application a, a little bit this year. I don't know how familiar you were with past iterations of the application, Drew, um, but we specifically have sort of a project management section that asks you know, how are you building a team? Who's going to be responsible? What's the decision making framework? Uh, and I think that's a place where the partners and the strength of the work together could be highlighted. And then I've always really personally appreciated when I see letters of support more focused on those that will be impacted by the outcome of the project. Like, what are you planning to do? And do they agree that your project is actually going to achieve that for them? So rather than saying, like, I'm working with the city of Barrie and here's a letter from their select board, talk about how the city of Barrie is involved in the project in your narrative and get a letter from the senior center or from uh, Capstone Community Action or somebody that's like, yes, this is actually going to do what they say that it's going to do. Great. There are uh, a couple of other. It, Sharon has dropped some questions in the chat just to um, add on to Drew's question. Uh, and Sharon, I'm wondering if you'd like to come off mute and, and share your questions. I, I am particularly interested. You asked about logic models, and I'm hoping you can explain a little bit more about what you're thinking there. Uh, sure. I'm sorry, I meant Drew's question there. Yeah, I just wondered about that as well. Um, we have numerous partners that we'll be working with, but there are other entities that might support the project or we hope will support the project that aren't actual partners. So I was considering getting paragraphs of testimonials and pulling them into one document. So it wouldn't be a letter per se, it would be a set of testimonials. I'm curious, Lauren and Becca, what you might say. I think from my perspective, um, I think I think Lauren, it, it was either Lauren or Becca who was saying this before about like, you know, the that the most impactful letters of support are from the folks who will be impacted by the work and and being thoughtful about who who is who is going to be impacted by the work and and choosing a few people, one to three 
who can really speak to their support for the project. In my mind, I think that might be a little stronger than a document of testimonials, but um, but we haven't really had that before. So Lauren or Becca, do you have other thoughts? Or Shalini, I see you've, you have your hand up too, so. Uh, Shalini, go ahead. Thanks, I wasn't sure if I should jump in yet or not. Yeah, I just wanted to add, um, just from a strategic standpoint, you might want to keep in mind that the reviewers of the applications will be reading several of them. So, so as Jackie was suggesting, being really careful about in, including the ones that are going to demonstrate the most impact would be the best idea, rather than adding a lot, sort of quality over quantity. So focus sure. then on the high quality ads and then keep the whole proposal succinct so that it's clear and concise, um, easily digestible by the people reading it. Um, you know, so sometimes a bullet list is better than paragraph after paragraph after paragraph. Um, just knowing that those are all going to be ways in which um, the review process will be um, likely simplified, and that will allow us to focus more on the content of what you're writing, the con the the driver of the idea, as opposed to all this other fluff around it. Sure, that sounds great. Um, and I guess leading off of that, logic models are a great way to summarize that type of thing and look at what are the um, contributing factors and what are the short and long-term outcomes that you're looking at. So I've, te I've tended to include them in large and small grants um, and was going to, I thought that there was an opportunity to add uh, have some attachments. Yeah. So I'm hoping that that is where I could drop that in. For sure. Yes. Sharon. Okay. Section Great. six supplemental information. Um, so that is something at the very end of the application um, that we have left it kind of open ended of anything you think reviewers need to really understand your project. Um, so anything that's in there is not going to be part of the like key scored information because like we shared the scoring rubric with you at, in part of that application guidance. Um, but if you think that that would enhance any reviewers understanding of what they're going to be seeing in the rest of the application, um, feel free to include things like a logic model um, or, you know, if you have engineering plans or additional photos or something like that, um, that there wasn't a place to put it, you can put it there. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you guys for these questions. They're great. Do we, we are getting ready to wrap up, but I think we have time for a few more questions, maybe one or two. Uh, is there anyone else who has a question before we start to wrap up? I don't see anything else in the chat. All right. Well, if if you have any last minute questions as I'm starting to wrap us up, please don't be shy about raising your hand. We want to make sure that this time is um, well spent and uh, useful for you. Um, but again, thank you everyone for being here. We really appreciate your questions. We appreciate your interest in the community grant program, the Vorit Community Grant Program. Um, we we really hope that this uh, the experience of filling out the full application is smooth and we can support you as much as we can. Um, it doesn't, you know, we don't have any last questions right now, but if as you're coming away from this meeting and you're thinking about what we talked about and you say, man, I, you know, I do have that question that I didn't get to ask. Um, we encourage you to go ahead and uh, drop an email to our recreation grants team um, at the anr.fpr recreation grants at vermont.gov. Um, we also have more open office hours. Um, so the next open office hour is going to be on Tuesday, November 21st from 1 to 2 p.m. Um, and again, that first half an hour is focus time. Um, that meeting is going to be focused the first half an hour on construction projects in particular, but we'll open up that second half an hour for um, more open Q&A. Um, so that's another opportunity for you to get in touch with us 
Um, and I, I see Shalini's hand raised. So before we wrap up, Shalini, do you have a something burning you need to say? Just a very quick little piece of advice to everyone. Um, even if you decide to submit your proposal under another track besides outdoor equity, which is fine, that's a great idea. As Jackie said earlier, equity is encouraged across all the grants, but don't hesitate to emphasize the ways in which your proposal has an equity component because we will plan to connect with people in the other tracks when they're doing the review to look at the equity component you're, you're um, listing and to weigh in and to say, yeah, that's really important or that's something we haven't seen much of before. So make sure we support it. So don't hesitate to really draw that out in your proposal, whether it's by creating a heading or a category or however you can do it to highlight equity. I think that that's going to be a powerful way to demonstrate that we've got equity running through all the different kinds of grant proposals. So I encourage you to make sure you highlight it. Great. Thank you, Shalini. Great advice. Um, if you weren't here at the very beginning, we did record this um, meeting. So if, if you want to remember an answer we gave or anything like that, um, we will be posting this on the, the community grant website. Um, it may not be there for for a little while, be patient as we get it up, but we will get it up there um, and you will be able to review this conversation. Um, or if you have a partner who wasn't able to make it and you want to let them know to come um, rewatch this conversation, um, you can, you'll be able to find it there. So thank you all for your time this evening. Um, we're really excited to read your proposals um, and we look forward to connecting with you further. Have a great night. Thanks, everybody. Safe travels, Drew. Bye. Good luck on all your proposals. Thanks for sticking around, Shalini. My pleasure. Bye.